Welcome to the first session on fluid mechanics. In this session, we will discuss about the subject fluid mechanics and the properties of fluids. Let's start with the introduction to the subject. You have already studied the subjects like engineering mechanics, wherein you study about rigid bodies at rest or in motion and the effect of force or load on such bodies. In that subject, we say that the body is completely rigid, so there is no deformation in the body. Then you study about a subject which is called as strength of materials or mechanics of solids. In this subject, you also study the bodies in rest and in motion. The bodies are solid like engineering mechanics. The only difference is the body is going to be of deformable type, which means when you apply load or force, the body will show some kind of resistance to the load or force. And if it is able to sustain, fair enough. If not, then it will show some failure. Then we come to this subject, which is called as fluid mechanics. Here, we will be discussing about the fluids, which will be again in the state of rest or it will be in motion. Now, when we talk about fluids, it means liquids and gases. These are the two states of matter that we are going to study in fluid mechanics. We will also study about various forces like pressure force, gravity force, viscous force or compressibility force and so on and so forth on these two states of matter. So fluid mechanics is that branch which deals with the behavior of fluids that is liquids or gases at rest as well as in motion. This branch of study has been divided into three types. The first type wherein the liquid and gas will be in the state of rest is called as fluid statics. The second type, the fluid will be in motion is called as fluid kinematics. Here we'll say the pressure forces are not to be considered. And the third type of study is called as fluid dynamics. It is also called as kinetics. Here the fluid is in motion. And the pressure forces are considered. Here the fluid is at rest. So these are the three branches that we are going to study. And these will be dealt in different chapters. Now let's start with the properties of these fluids that is liquids and gases. The first property is called as density or mass density. It is indicated by the symbol rho. It's a Greek symbol. It is defined as a ratio of mass of fluid to its volume. So I can say rho is equal to mass of fluid to the volume of fluid. For mass, I'm going to use symbol m and for volume, I'll use the symbol as v. So therefore, my rho will be indicated as m by v, mass upon volume. Let's talk about the unit of rho. When I talk about the unit of any quantity, I can directly talk about the unit of these right hand side quantities, which I already know. For example, mass can be represented in kg in the SI system and volume can be represented as say meter cube. So the unit becomes kg per meter cube. You may also have the unit as gram per centimeter cube. Let's talk about a standard fluid. When I talk about liquid, my standard fluid is water. And when I talk about gases, my standard fluid is air. So for liquid, that is water, rho value 
is 1000 kg per meter cube. This is a standard value which is assumed for solving of numericals. Now if I want to convert this into gram per centimeter cube, that's very simple. 1000, I'm converting into gram per centimeter cube. So 1 kg is 1000 gram. And 1 meter cube, we know 1 meter is 10 raised to 2 centimeter. So 1 meter cube becomes 10 raised to 2 raised to 3 centimeter cube. 2 into 3 is 6, so this becomes 6 centimeter cube. So I'll write here 10 raised to 6. So these 3, 3 and 6, everything gets cancelled. What remains is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So rho for water is either 1000 kg per meter cube or it is 1 gram per centimeter cube. Suppose if I talk about gases, air, the value of rho is generally considered as 1.12 kg per meter cube. The next property that we are discussing is specific weight or weight density. We are going to use the symbol small w for indicating specific weight. It is defined as the ratio of the weight of a fluid to its volume. So I can say small w is weight of fluid to the volume of fluid. For weight, I'll use the symbol capital W and for volume, it is capital V. So small v is capital W upon V. That's the formula. When I have to talk about the unit, I know the unit of weight is in Newton and volume is in meter cube. So this is one of the unit that can be used for specific weight. Now let's break up this formula over here. Weight can also be written as mass of fluid into acceleration due to gravity and this is volume as it is. Mass upon volume we just discussed is density so it becomes rho g. So I can also say small w is rho g. This is another formula which can be used. Now here and here for both the formulas the unit is going to remain the same that is Newton per meter cube. If you want you can check it over here. Rho is kg per meter cube and g is meter per second square. When I talk about Newton, kg meter per second square is nothing but Newton. So this becomes Newton per meter cube. So unit for both the formulas is the same, Newton per meter cube. It can also be written as Newton per centimeter cube. You can write it as Newton per mm cube or kilonewton per meter cube. In any format you want, you can write the unit. Next, let's talk about specific volume. It is defined as the volume of a fluid occupied by an unit mass. That is, when I talk about specific volume, I am actually saying that specific volume, you can use this symbol V with a cross over it, is equal to volume of fluid to the mass of fluid. So this becomes V upon M. Now we know M upon V is rho. So this specific volume is nothing but 1 upon density of a fluid. The unit of density is kg per meter cube. So the unit for specific volume will be meter cube per kg. So this is the unit. Next let's talk about another property that is specific gravity. It is defined as the ratio of weight density or density, whichever you want to say, of a fluid to this weight density or density of a standard fluid. So let's write the formula. S is weight density of fluid to the weight density of standard fluid. Now here in terms of weight density, you can also write density. I'll show you how. So let's talk separately about two liquids. For example, if I talk about a particular liquid L, 
then it is weight density of the liquid that is small w of liquid upon weight density of standard fluid now when i'm talking about liquid my standard fluid is going to be water when i talk about gases so let's write another formula here s for a particular gas g this will be weight density of gas upon weight density of air because air is going to be considered as standard fluid for gases we know that this weight density can also be written as rho into g rho will be for the liquid and g is a constant that is not defined for any liquid or any gas when i talk about weight density of water this will be rho of water into g g gets cancelled out from the numerator and denominator so this becomes a ratio of density of liquid to the density of standard liquid that is water so let's talk about any liquid in that case specific gravity will be defined by this formula let's make some changes here as well this is going to be rho of gas into g upon rho of air into g g gets cancelled so i can say s for a particular gas will be rho of gas upon rho of air so these are the formulas that you can use either this one in terms of weight density or in terms of density so that is the definition that is given for liquids the standard fluid is taken as water and for gases the standard fluid is taken as air it is also called as relative density this is something which you need to remember the specific gravity in certain numericals can also be written as relative density it is a dimensionless quantity this is understood by now because specific gravity is the ratio of same quantities so obviously the units will get cancelled out and it has no unit and it is denoted by s now let's take up some examples suppose if i say that s for mercury is 13.6 so i can calculate the value of rho of mercury i will substitute s of mercury will be rho of mercury upon rho of water because mercury is a liquid so this will be 13.6 is equal to rho of mercury upon rho of water is 1000 cross multiply these two you will get rho of mercury as 13600 kg per meter cube so this is how you can find out the rho of any liquid if you know the specific gravity for that particular liquid or if at all it is required to calculate the specific gravity you need to know the rho value of the liquid in that case So these are some properties that we discuss with this I am going to end the session I hope you have understood the first four basic properties of fluids in the next session we will discuss numericals on this topic see you in the next session thank you